Incompatible apps are a pain in the neck. In fact, arguably, they're one of the reasons why people haven't moved towards some of the newer Windows desktop versions, like Windows 7 and Windows 8, much faster. If your apps can't work on Windows 7 and Windows 8, well, then you're not going to move off of your existing Windows version. But did you know that many incompatible apps can, in fact, be shimmed into compatibility? There's a tool called the Application Compatibility Toolkit. And in this quick micro nugget from my recent uh, series with CBT Nuggets on the 70-416 exam, I talk a little bit about how you can make those incompatible apps compatible. Many of us are not responsible for managing Mavis Beacon teaches typing. If you are, I would like to know that because I think that's just awesome. Uh, for the applications that are not existing already in the database, we have to create our own new application fix. Uh, the name of the program here we're dealing with is WinZip. Uh, the name of the vendor, I believe, is still uh, Nico Mac Computing. And then we have to identify a program file location, too. Now, this program file location here is going to be essentially where we find WinZip on the computer. Uh, I believe it's going to be here under, let's see, Computer, C, uh, Program Files, and then WinZip. Now, for us to be able to apply these fixes, we're going to have to have a version of this application that's actually read-write. And Windows, particularly Windows 8, can sometimes actually adjust some of the, the, the perms on these to make them so they don't work. So, uh, for example, I've got the WinZip64 app here, and it says it's set to read only. What I'm attempting to do here is very similar to what I maybe attempted to do before we, under this compatibility tab here. You've used this before, right? You've used this in other versions of Windows. Oh, I've got an app that's an, that's an old app, and I've got to make it work on this machine, so I don't know. Maybe I'll run it in an older compatibility mode here, or change the color, or run it in 640 by 480 because it works, or uh, maybe force this thing to run as an administrator if possible. Well, sometimes this works. Sometimes it doesn't, because these switches, are just, there's, there's not that many options here. And doing so for this specific executable only fixes this one executable on this one computer. What the compatibility administrator wants to do is actually fix it for everyone, everywhere, all at once. So let's remove the read-only bit on this before. You'll find that the compatibility administrator looks kind of, again, like that compatibility tab that you saw associated with the exe file. I can run now this program in compatibility mode for Vista, for example, or for, for other uh, options if they're available for this, this application. But more importantly than that, I can actually go through and, and set a variety of these additional compatibility modes. Right? These compatibility modes create a different execution space for this application so that maybe a detector for Windows 7 does not actually fail or for it emulates how Vista ends up sorting things or um, something to do with fonts down here or the installer gets modified. Now what's great about the, the administrator is that if I go and I pick something and then I can choose test run, it will actually go through and execute the application with this bit, the, this execution space bit enabled. So I can kind of go through and click through all the different options to determine which of these modes is going to fix my app. When I have one that runs successfully, well then I can just deliver this out and a lot of times through a logon script and everyone will just run with these compatibility bits actually enabled. Sometimes, however, the compatibility modes aren't enough. And so we need to identify one or more compatibility fixes as well. As you can see here, there are 118 possible fixes here in this version. So going through each one and figuring out what's causing the problem is going to be, well, it's going to be a bit of a chore for you. In certain cases, you'll have to identify parameters that are associated with that uh, compatibility fix as well and keep test running the application until you determine whether or not it works. Once I've found one that does, the last step in the process is to essentially associate this fix with the application by looking at the characteristics of the exe that I want to associate it with. So here's the exe, winzip64.exe. By size, check some bin file version, company name. I can identify here which of the, the essentially the, the properties of this file that I want to associate with the fix that I intend to deploy. I'm doing this because what I am creating here is a database. Want to learn more? Check out cptnuggets.com.